I can hear you. Yes, sir. So, yeah, I've been continuing to go through, and I mean, I've got it down so where I understand that um, when we're doing the uh, the calls, it's a uh, debit gives you a basis where you're, where you're looking for the strike price. How are you deciding, like, as I watch other people doing it, some of them have the calls above or below, um, you know, when they buy or sell. How are you deciding what's determining where you're, aside from, like, if you pick the strike at one standard deviation away, and that's where you're selling the put or selling the call, how are you determining where you're doing the opposing strike that you're matching up with it? Um, if I'm understanding your question, first of all, I, th you're ask I think you're uh, you're um, mixing up credit spreads and debit spreads, uh, or you're. Uh, well, I guess what I, I guess it goes back to the whole thing is what I see a lot of people try and do is they go, "I'm doing a iron condor," or "I'm doing okay. a, this," and they sure. have this like templated. Thing that just tells them do this, do that. Uh -huh. What I'm trying, what I'm trying to do is go back to the building blocks of understanding it from the standpoint of you have a a stock, the underlying thing that you're going to then make a decision in terms of you want to sell, you want to focus on the selling side of it to get the premium. Yes, I prefer to sell premium. And then yeah. from there, you're going to start um, trying to make a decision as to matching up what you've sold with something that you're going to buy against it to get the cost basis down um you know because you it's not you're not just well, having a well, like let a me let me can you see can you see the screen okay yep. okay well let's just take the square uh, square's got a pretty high iv rank so we i don't know if this will work out or not but we go to may 21st right now and um see if this answers your question if i was going to sell a one standard deviation strangle that's with no protection that's not our condor i would go around the 16 delta here and i would go around the six so they don't have a 16 they got a 17. that's what that would be my my one standard deviation strangle okay now, so in that so in that situation you've basically just sold a put and sold a call yeah and that's undefined that's undefined risk and, and you can see right here it, probably, it takes about twenty three hundred dollars if you've got a margin account to put the trade on and but uh, so that, you're you're using the each one against each other to kind of offset your risk because yeah, one goes up one yeah. This is a totally neutral trade because I've got um, puts are, puts are negative deltas, calls are positive deltas. So yeah. if I, you know, minus as you know from math, minus a minus. So if I sell a put, then that's plus seventeen deltas. And conversely, this is plus. If I sell a call, it's minus seventeen. So this is strictly a delta neutral trade. This is. Right now, as it stands, now that's good. That price is going to move, and it's going to move one way or the other. But as we're looking at it right now, that would be a delta neutral trade. So that's a strictly, you know, I look at it. I say, I don't, you know, I really don't have a bias one way or the other. I'm just going to trade it, um, put on a neutral strategy. And the fact that I'm at one standard deviation, you know, I've got about, a, as you know, about a seventy percent probability of it staying within there. If I manage it early. Uh, manage the winner early, that probability gets up uh, around 80%. So, uh, but, so but, but so, like when you say neutral, that's the direction of the stock, and you're basically looking at it, if the stock goes one way or the other, the put or the call is going to cancel out the other one in terms of as one gains, the other one will lose, and that's helping you offset your risk. In this case, yes. Uh, the um, like I said, the risk is the risk is unlimited. Uh, the way brokerages typically look at the risk is about the two standard deviation. In this case, this would be a one standard deviation strangle, and I'm yeah. going to collect eight hundred and fifty dollars. And for this, initially, I'm going to put up about twenty four hundred dollars in uh, in uh, in margin if it's a margin account. So that now that. Uh, an iron condor on the other, and, and these are just, you know, 
we're, we don't know where price is going to be. It's going to, you know, we, our expectation is that 70% of the time it's going to stay in this area. And we're going to man, we're going to try to get by this rather than wait for expiration and, and, and collect the whole $850. We're going to buy that back for you know, 25 to 50%, depending on how much time's elapsed. Now that's so is that also like in think or swim when I do the paper trading and I initiate a position and then you start seeing the prices change. Are they basically showing you what's going to happen if you do a closing order? In terms uh, of let me bring up think or swim. I thought it was, okay. Let me do the same thing. So I'll see what you're, I'll see what you're asking me here. Oh, let me, um, I'm going to go to the same thing square. I'm going to go also go. So, um, what well so for example if you have if you go i think it's the monitor tab let me look on mine okay when you go on the monitor tab um the p l from the open and it's showing you let me go back and see where you're at it's showing you like the price is changing is that basically um because even though you collect the premium you still have to have a closing order to get out of the position, are they just showing you with that PL thing what's going to happen when you are do you, the close? Are you talking about this right now? This yeah, PL yeah. here? Okay. Yeah. That that's dynamic. That changes with every tick, either in volatility or the price of the underlying. You can probably see these changing on your screen. These are these are changing because um, in the case of the supplied materials, um, I've got I think I've only got a call left on that. Let's see where. Go back to if, if this, yeah. Yeah, I've got an in the money call right now. So I'm going to be adjusting that. But nonetheless, I've got an in the money call. And every time that price changes, this is dynamic. This is real. This is what, uh, you know, it's just one from 5,900 to 6,000. And, and so those are the live prices reflected. I don't know how it works in a paper account. It might well, be. No, it's, the, bas it's basically the same. But I guess what I'm trying to understand is. Let's just say you sold a call or a put in company XYZ and you collected $100 just to make it simple. Well, then at that P&L thing keeps changing from what that initial thing is. Is that them reflecting what's going to happen when you close the order? No, it's reflecting what is going to happen if you exited at that microsecond. If yeah, I that's, what I, this, that's what I mean. If you exited uh, the position at that yeah. moment, it's yeah, that, showing you what the yeah, closing order would do to it. Correct. Okay, that'll that's show what you, I was trying to understand. Yeah, uh -huh, yeah, that, that if yeah, not it doesn't tell you the future. You know, it doesn't tell yeah, you. No, where, I see. Yeah, okay. yeah, I see what it, it was showing you. What's going to happen when you exit the position? Yeah, so, and, and bear and bear in mind uh, when you're and, and let's talk about undefined risk trades first. When you're doing an undefined risk trade, like like we just talked about with Square, we could take this thing. Yeah. Um, those those are going to fluctuate more because you don't have the protective. Call or put like you like we talked about on the um, on the. Well, so I um, guess that's part of like what you just did right there, where you did a strangle and you had you sold a call and you sold a put. Yeah, I sold right here. I I sold the the one delta or the one, one standard deviation. So I, I about there something something like that. That's about a one standard deviation strangle. If I put that on right now, I'm going to get I'm going to take in about eight hundred or seven hundred sixty dollars, and now. If, if the volatility increases, if that price does not move, but volatility increases, the price of those options are going to increase. You're going to show an unrealized loss at that point because what you sold for 760 might now be 960 to buy it back. But the reality, you know, you're still, uh, if it's if the price is still between there, between the strikes, you're relying on every day you've got theta decay, which is and this so number. The, so when you say like the price of the stock could remain the same, but what the VIX would then go up, and that's where well, you're going to get yeah, the, and, and more and more importantly, yeah, the VIX go up, but more importantly, the 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 volatility on this individual stock right now when I'm selling this, the implied volatility for the week of the 21st is 57.74 percent. That's mm -hmm. the implied volatility for that week. Every tick that changes is going yeah. to affect the price of the option, but. You know we're not that finite. We're you know we're we're hoping to be far enough away. Uh, it's not gonna. It's still you're, you're, everything's still gonna change. But every day in the case of uh, let me find one that I've got a live one on here. 
that I've got a strangle on. Uh, do I have one on MU? I can't remember. Uh, yeah. Uh, here, here's, here's, um, here, here's the strangle, uh, uh, short of 115 call and a 72 and a half put. When I sold this trade, I sold it for $186. Right now, if I closed it, it cost me 78 bucks to buy it back. So there'd be a, what about $108 pro, uh, yeah, $108 profit. This thing is going down in value by about 50 cents a day. Right there, forty nine. So, uh, oh no, sorry, three seventy six. That's the extrinsic value. So this, I knew something was wrong. That this is going down. So tomorrow, if nothing changes, if you could freeze this in time, tomorrow, one day later, instead of being seventy seven to buy it back, it's going to be about seventy four to buy it back. So mm -hmm. you're, the you're thing making, is working in your yeah, favor. Yeah, th this is what this is what pays us is the theta decay. So that's. You know that obviously we're we're selling extrinsic value, which is because the the options we're selling are out of the money, so they're they're really worthless. But of course, because of time, and because of volatility, and because of price of underlay, and they have a value. So every day the ticks buy. If there's no change in price and no change in volatility, that price will come in. Because you'll see me in the and maybe this would help. You'll see me in the room. I'll say okay. Um, Somebody asked me, are we, are we going to get out of this trade? Let's see. And let me, what, what do I have a trade on? And let me, that, that might explain it better. Uh, PM, ride, rig, AMC, AMD. Now nah, that's, that's a, here's Bob. Now nah, that's a defined risk trade. Disney's, Disney's a defined risk trade. Okay. Because I'm just going about, gonna think about doing another one here on Disney. These, the these strikes, but right now, uh, this Disney trade, the the two I sold the two twenty one sixty five strangle, and if you look over here, I sold it for four dollars and twenty cents. And if I wanted to buy that thing back right now, it cost me two sixty four. So it's already come in one hundred and sixty dollars. I mean, I got an exit at fifty percent, which would be two ten. But uh, now, what? Let me show, let me show you this line here. So every day you can see the theta here. Uh, it's now the theta shown here is a negative number, but again we're short, so negative times a negative is a positive. We want positive theta, and that's what you have on short options. So right now this little one seventy put is going down by almost six dollars a day. In the 170 call is going down by what six and a half dollars a day, so about 13, 14 dollars a day. That trade is is what we call coming in, or it's you know. And, and again, that's if there's no change in volatility up here. The volatility is 35.7 for that week. No change in volatility, no change in price. Now, as long as it stays between the strikes, um, price doesn't affect it as materially as as the vol uh, as volatility, but if, but if you see it start to go, you know, move down towards this 170, you know, the price of this thing will shoot up. And of course, the price of the 210 will, will go down. Maybe not not equally, but um, you know, depending on the gamma and all this other stuff. But so that that's what you have to keep in mind. Like in this trade, and in this trade that I'm looking to do right now is sell the 210 170, and I'm going to collect $4.25. What was that? I can't remember what the delta was. I think it was right around uh, 20 delta on that side, 16 delta on that side. So I'm a little closer. So it's very, very, very slightly um, bearish trade because it's just because my deltas are a little bit bigger than it's not a whole neutral trade. Mm -hmm. Now, if I were going to if I were going to define the risk and some of the people in the room are doing a Roth accounts and they can't have undefined risk, you know, I may come in here and. It buy a, a a protective put and come up say the same spread away twenty dollars would be here two ten twenty buy that one. Uh, why didn't that? that should, and now now I'm only collecting two eighty five, but now I've defined the risk. So if this thing goes to five hundred or goes down to zero, it's going to cost me two thousand dollars to buy this back, but I've collected two hundred eighty five dollars. So that's what you say by defined risk that. You're still going to see the, the the price of the price of the overall trade change a little bit every day if if there's a change in volatility or a price, 
but uh, you're never going to you've defined you've defined the risk because here so I'm what's, not what's, ma what's making you decide between where you're buying those calls at in terms of above and below and um, where I'm buying the call and the put to define the risk. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, th there's a couple things, but, but first of all, if I'm going to do an iron condor, there, um, you understand if I'm going to do a strangle, you know, I may do a 20 delta strangle or a 16 delta yeah, strangle. Yeah. So, okay, okay, that's pretty. Now, if I'm there, there's there's two ways, or I call them two different trades. On an iron condor, what I call the, the trades that we do on defined risk, we want to collect a third of the width of the strike. So if I were going, if if I had a, let's just say I had a, for some reason, I've got an upward bias on Disney and I might come in here and I might sell the, the, the put that's close to it and I may buy the 180 and I'm, I want to collect about a third of the width of the strike. That's what I like to do because that keeps everything that I do around that 70% probability of profit. So, um, I, and, and obviously a dollar seventy, you got five dollars. You know, dollar sixty-seven is a third of the width. But so I usually try to get around a dollar seventy. And and the only thing that you know, people say, well, you're too close to the to the price. Well, I do this all the time. So I know that you know over the course of many occurrences that the mask going to work in my favor. So what what is the deciding factor on something like? A defined risk like a put spread or let's go on the other side on a on a call spread well i want to collect a, now that's too much money i i don't want to I, I so i'm going to go up a little bit because i want to collect a third of the width of the strike and that's a little bit on the light side but that's Wait, probably where say, i would go when you say a third of the width of the strike what uh -huh. is it that you what is it that you're? I see how you're trying to get it down to around a dollar sixty-seven, but where? Well, it de it depends on the on the width of these. These strikes are five dollars wide. Do you see that? Yeah. Okay. So. Oh, I see. You want a third of five dollars. Yeah, a third of five dollars. Oh. If, if I was doing if I was doing a ten dollar wide, I would want a third of ten dollars. I want three thirty-five or something like that. Yeah. So. Oh, so I see. When you're looking at the price of it based on how wide the strikes are, that's telling you whether you're pricing it properly. Correct, and you'll see some that have dollar. Uh, which one I've got? Pelotar, I think's got. You know, some of these will have. And here's one I did uh, weeks ago. I've even rolled it once. But there's a three dollar wide. If I was doing that, I'd obviously want to collect. You know, maybe just a little over a dollar to kind of cover the commission. But I want to collect a third of the of a dollar or three dollars is one dollar. So that would be. That's uh, so. That's all that defines that. Now the the other side of that would be. Uh, let's go back to Disney. I might say, um, like you hear me, I, I'll take, I'll say like a wide iron condor, or I'll call the same thing a wide iron condor or a synthetic strangle. If I've got the buying power and I'm not overly concerned about a company and I want to sell that strangle and collect 425, you know, I, I like that price. Okay. Now, if I were going to, I'm okay with with everything. I, I, you know, it's it's about where I want to be risk wise, consistent with what I do. If I want to make it an iron condor, I want to I'm going to buy those wings, and I still want to collect a, about a third of the width of the strike. This is just a tiny bit light, but it's still a third of the width of the strike. Now, and that would be an iron condor. Uh, you know, about collecting about. I mean. It, you can choose to do them at two standard deviations and collect 10% the width of it, but I like to stay in that one third range. So I'm going to tell you what I do. So now let's just say, yeah, I really like that strangle 425, but I don't want to do an undefined risk trade. So I might come down here and buy really cheap calls. Uh, let me show you something here. Okay. So if I sell this, it's going to cost about $1,900. So if I come down here and buy, uh, that's not going to help much. Yeah, it might help a little bit. Once, uh, so I'm uh, twenty bucks and twenty bucks. So now I'm only collecting two eighty eight, uh, and I've reduced. I've, in this case, this isn't the best example. I could show better. I'm only reduced my buying power by a couple hundred bucks. But that that would give some people that are doing them in IRAs and that that they can't have. Um, and tasty works you can, but like a thicker swim, you can't have undefined uh, or um, 
you, know, you can't have short calls in an IRA. They may have to put a wing on it. They may even come all the way down here because they really want this strangle on, but to make it conform with what they can do in their account, they put they might put wide wings on. So a, a straight all-American iron condor that I'm going to do is going to be um, a third of the width of the strike. And let's look at that square rule because that had a high IV rank. I look up here, it's got a 40 IV. Uh, let me clear that. And I might come in here and say, okay, let's just say, now this one, this one is trended down today. Let's see how it's looking on the year. And it's kind of up on the upside. So, you know, if you have a bias, you might say, well, they've kind of, if they if they, well, they think they've overdone this thing, I might want to play it to the upside. I've got an upward bias. I would want to, now there's, there's a $10 wide, so I want to be around $3.35. So let's see if we could slide that down. There we go. So that would be a, a conforming, uh, if you will, put credit spread. Uh, in uh, you, you know, you're 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 collecting $335. You're, re, you're uh, risking $1,000. So the most you can lose is $665. It's a defined risk trade. So, and if I were if I had a the reverse bias, I think this thing's way at the top. I want to sell it. I'd come here and uh, I, I usually start out around there and see if I can get a third of the width of the strike. Eh, it's 390. I don't. I don't think I'm going to be able to go here. Now eh, that's not bad. I mean, I'd like to have 330, but that's not too bad. So you know, I might say, okay, I think this thing's really top, and I've kind of got a. I've got a a neutral to bearish bias because if this thing's neutral, if it stays put, if it you know doesn't go above. You know, 253, which is your break even. If it, if it stays here, you know that that's uh, you know that's that's a neutral. Obviously, if it goes down, this thing's going to drop in value faster. You're going to be able to you sell it for three bucks. You're going to be able to buy it back for something less, much quicker. If if directionally it works in your favor, it doesn't have to. As long as it's you know, as long as it doesn't move, uh, you know, above your short strike here, you know that you, that's fine. Now, if I if I were going to take this thing, I said, well, I'm really neutral on it. I could say, okay, let's take a one, let's do a one standard deviation strangle. There's 15, and there's about 15. So there now I'm collecting 755, and I could say, okay, that I just picked a one standard deviation. Most of the time, they're going to be somewhat balanced. If I think this thing's at the top, I may cheat this down a little bit. You know, I may cheat this a little bit, but. Those are just little nuances, but this is right now is a one standard deviation strangle. I'm collecting $755 and let's see what we got to risk. We got to risk about $2,400. And you say, well, I really, uh, I, you know, I, I like that tray, but I don't want to have undefined risk. Let's see if I put some wings on it. And I put $20 wings, 95.75. Now my, uh, Credit's dropped all the way down to 380, and I'm not going to save a lot in buying power, but but I'm only going to cost me 1600 in buying power, and that's you know the most I can lose is is this is twenty dollars difference, so two thousand on a one contract minus 380 is what 1620, so that's that, that's the most I can lose. Now I might want to if I was going to do an iron condor, let's start, let's get rid of these. I would, and I wanted to keep it balanced, neutral like it is right now. I might mm -hmm. start in here and go, okay, let me add these two wings. And I want to collect a third of the width. So now here's the problem on this side, you got $10. So we're gonna to have to go $10 wide on both sides on this one. So I want to collect 330. Well, obviously I'm not getting 330. I wouldn't do this trade. So now I would say to myself, okay, I mean, you know, am, am I more bullish, more bearish? You know, if I, and I say, well, you know, I'm a little, I think it's got a propensity more inclined to go down. This is just me. I have no clue what's going to happen. So I may cheat this down a, a strike. I'm still not getting three dollar a third of the width. So then I might go take this one and go up here like this. And 292 still not there. Um, most of the time you're going to find on iron condors, your short strike is going to have to be around the 25 to 30 delta. So let's just put them at the 25 and see how that looks. 210, 200. That's a little, now that's a little more credit that I'd like to get. Uh, you'll say, why would you want more credit? Well, that, that re the, the, um, the credit I receive, um, the reciprocal is, is the probability. It's that, it's really that simple. So this is, you know, uh, I'm risking $6, risking uh, $6 to make $4. So I've got a, you know, that reciprocal 
um, uh, is the probability. So now, I, now I'll probably go and I'll say, okay, which, you know, maybe I go down here because I'm more concerned about the downside than I am the upside. And oh, that one, I got to go here. Now, now we've got, now I've got a legitimate iron condor. You know, I might, I might, this one is a little bit unbalanced in the fact that my shorts at the 18 and my longs at the, at the 20, or my, my calls at the 26, my puts at the 18. But, um, that's probably, you know, that's the trade I would do. That would give me a third of the width of the strike. That would be an iron condor. Uh, if I felt more the other way, I might come down here. And to get a third of the width, I might go like that. That's still not, I got to go to, you know. And there, there's, a, so, so that, you know, that, that's a little more personal. I mean, the probabilities are the same. Um, you, you know, you. You just want trades that meet your criteria and put them on. It's not so much about trying to be right. In this case, you know, squares up pretty high. I would probably have, I would probably be more inclined to put the call side a little closer. You know, this might not be the best example in the world, but that's, uh, we find, does that, yeah, no, I think does that clarify anything? Answered, for me, in the sense of what's happening is it's you, when you, sell the call and put and then you add the other like the wing to it then you're defining the risk because it's undefined at that point and then you're determining getting that on um, one third of the uh the, the spread that you want to collect or whatever and so that's what i was because like i see there's so many people out there doing it so many different ways oh, i'm sure. trying to understand is there some methodology and when everyone just pulls out a templated name and puts it together i'm trying to understand how like you do right there putting it together from the individual mm -hmm. perspectives of how you're evaluating everything i i don't think i posted it yet because I, I just this got just this got filled i sold a i sold a strangle on us steel so this is a real live one that i just put on um i already had one on and i sold the 35 I, again and i sold the 19 so it was 16 dealt on that side 17 dealt on that side just what we talked about that was this one takes so little this one isn't worth putting wings on you know because i'll show you it only takes about 200 dollars in capital to put that 245 dollars in capital to put that on so if it's hard to um let's see if you put wings wings right even if you went five dollars wide you, to, uh, 14 you know, you're only getting 81 cents you're not even getting a third of the width of the strike and you're really you're actually going to increase your capital requirement it, this is unusual because it's such a low price stock with relative yeah it's got decent volatility but uh, that's when i just got filled here at 1246 so um and there was no you know there's no thinking about it um i don't know if you were around when i sold a couple of weeks ago i sold the naked puts on u.s steel and then it went against yeah, me and I, I remember sold, that because okay. yeah and i and i end up selling well here's those trades let me i've already closed those trades out but uh because i had i know i was on with craig let me find i sold uh da, 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 over here let's see 21 yeah, here on the 15th, I sold the 21. I just sold a naked put. I sold the th around the 30 delta naked put. Because when I sell when I sell naked puts or naked calls, I'm usually around the 30 delta-ish because, again, that gives me about a 70% probability. And I'm kind of staying in, in my wheelhouse. That's that 70% uh, probability of profit. So I sold that for $1.32. And then uh, that thing went down. The next day, I sold the 20 for a dollar 10 then um i followed that up it moved up a little bit and i ended up selling uh against this uh against the first one against the 21 uh uh put i sold the 30 call and against the 20 put i sold the 29 so now i had i had um these i had basically uh strangles on i went from naked puts the strangles to put more premium and i just closed those out you can um the one i closed out here uh let's see here the 2129 or the 2029 i closed out for 45 cents um and i collected the 2029 i collected a dollar 10 and then uh 52 so i collected a dollar 62 
I bought it back for 45 cents. So I made a dollar 17 on it and pretty much the same as like a, almost within a few pennies or dollars of, on the other trade. I, I sold the, uh, the 21 for a dollar 32 and I sold the 30 call for 44. So it's a dollar 76. And that got filled yesterday when I was out of town. Uh, or no, that was one filled Friday for 73 cents. So I did that for about 50% also. So, um, and I, I still have this one on uh, the 30th of March. In fact, John asked me about in the room today. I sold the 3520 strangle, which you could still see is still on there. So the, uh, and 30, the, there's the there's the 20 short put. There's the 35 short call. So it's still kind of in the middle. It's it's moved a little closer to the um, to the 20. So the price of the puts have gone up a little bit. These have probably gone down a little bit. But um, the reality is, it's uh, I've got the trade working to close it back. I sold it for 220. You know, 50 percent is about a dollar 10. So I put a dollar five in case I'm not here. Right now it's a dollar 59. So I can make $60 on it right now, but, you know, I just got it working. So, um, you know, there's nothing, you know, there's nothing magical. When you talk about different templates, the, I think these names are, you know, are really confusing. But the only make, the only thing that I always thought the brokers did them to confuse you so you think it's too hard. But I think the thing that names are good, are good for is, you know, I sold a one standard deviation strangle. I don't have to say I sold the 35 call and the 20 put, you know, as an example. But beyond that, you know, there's probably as many templates to use your term out there as, as there are. Um, this is the way I've learned with tasty trade and you know, worked very well for me. I, I like to be in that 70% probability of profit range, um, you know, most of the time and over a period of, uh, you know, over a period of a lot of trades, um, you know, you, the math works. Uh, I guess that's just, so I don't know if that, but probably. Yeah, and that basically answered my questions. I mean, you, the way you break it down and get into the details of why it's happening, whereas the stuff I try and find out there, you know, because I'm trying to learn it from so many different sure. angles. And I think it's almost like they're just mass marketing it to try to get people interested. But at the same time, it doesn't explain to me why they're doing it. And you can't apply the same thing to every single scenario. So that's why I was trying to understand more, um, you know, and then basically what you were doing where you were finding the, um, trying to get a third of the width and. Yeah, a third of the width on a. On and a, defining on a, the risk, yeah, whereas correct. if you have a strangle, it's undefined. It's not, mm -hmm. that, that answers a lot of it right there. Or, you know, and, uh, right now, if I was, if I was going to sell a naked put, uh, you know, I only, this thing sold off today. And that's another thing you asked early on. How do I decide what, what side I'm selling? I'm probably going to sell a naked put or do a put spread on the down day. This thing's down 50 cents. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm probably going to do the reverse to sell a call spread or a naked call or, or on, on an up day. You know, and I'm, I could put a, you know, put a, a um, an iron condor on or a strangle really on either day. But, um, you know, my big thing is, I say it takes 30 seconds or less to put a trade. This thing's got a, a decent IV rank. And years ago, when I first started with these guys, this had to be above 50. But now we they found all their research. It's not mine, but they spent millions and millions on research. But the research shows that, um, you know, the math, obviously, the higher the implied volatility rank, the more we're going to be able to sell these options for. It's not going to change the the statistical probability of success is that's going to stay the same. But if I sell this when the volatility is real high, like I might get two or two and a half, you know, two, two, 250 bucks for this. I just got a dollar 33. You know, it's really not even that appealing to me, but it doesn't take much capital. And I'm trying to find some trades because we're right here at our magic 45 days to expiration. I'm going to say magic that are kind of our sweet spot. So I look here and say, okay, we've got a 30 IV rank. What can I do? Uh, okay. Do I, you know, do I have a, do I have a bias? Not really on U.S. Steel. I mean, you know, people want to say, oh, okay, Biden just came out with this big infrastructure plan. And they're going to need a bunch of steel. And all. I don't think about any of that crap, you know, part yeah. of my French. I just say, okay, you know, because nobody knows what's going to happen. And I say, okay, I just think, you know, uh, okay, I'm, you know, I'm going to, you know, maybe I think this is near the top. I might have my call a strike or two closer and the put a far, far strike or two farther away. But beyond that, I mean, this took 30 seconds. I said, okay, 
I want to get another trade on U.S. Steel. It's got a, one of the few that have a decent IV rank. And I said, I, I'm going to sell this and I'm going to sell this. Where last week I sold that. I sold the 35 and the 20. Today I sold the 35 and the 19. So I got, you know, um, both those trades. And that's it. That's it. And if I, you know, if you said, well, I want to do, a, you know, an iron condor on this trade, I'd probably probably look around the 25. So I'd probably, and you're probably not going to do be able to do very wide, but I'd probably say, okay, can we do a $3 wide iron condor 27, 18? Uh, and let's go up here is 26 and three is 34. Yeah, there's a, yeah, there, I mean, that's how easy it is. Okay, there's a dollar seven. That fits my, that fits my mold. I, I'm collecting a third of the width of the strike. It's pretty delta neutral because I'm at, you know, around the 20, you know, 26, 27, um, you know, uh, delta on each side. And like I told you, you're usually going to be on an iron condor. You're probably going to be close between the 25 and the 30 will be your short strike. Now, can I widen this out anymore? I probably can't go five wide. 21. 16. Yeah, see, that's five wide. I want to collect $1.67, and I can't quite do it. So this would be one that I would just, if I wanted to do the trade or somebody in the room says, hey, give me a, a low price uh, iron condor, you know, I, I would do this. This doesn't save you much buying power, as you'll see. It still takes 197. I mean, the naked will only take 250. But, I mean, that's how simple it is, Richard. I mean, it's just really, you know, is the IV rank is the IV rank at a level that I'm that I'm going to get a decent amount of premium for? And uh, what I do is I I look at these every day. My my watch list. I sort them by IV rank, and I start going down. You know, and I'm saying oh, I don't really trade. I do trade square. I just uh, you know I traded X again today. I would you know Disney's a decent one. Like I said, Disney. Um, it's got earnings. This is something you you know you may or, may or may not want to keep your eye on. I kind of keep my eye on earnings, but, you know, Disney. Um, I mean, we sold this thing on the 29th, you know, so. I mean, last Monday, the, the way you, you sort by the Ivy rank and earnings, all that, all that stuff's easy for me. What I'm trying to get my mind around is what you were doing all through the beginning of this thing in terms of calculating the, um, where you're putting the strikes and, you know, determining all the different things that we just went through. That's mm -hmm. what's the harder okay. part for me because I come yeah. from the thing of buying stocks where you just buy and sell. Right, so. right. You buy and hold. And, yeah. yeah. I mean, if, yeah and if I were going to buy a stock, you know, like I said, every stock I buy, if I was going to buy a hundred shares of Disney, I would be buying, I would buy the stock and I would, I would, let's see, I would go, uh, let's see, that's, uh, I want to buy the stock and I want to sell a call and I'd sell between the 30 and the 40 Delta. I'd probably sell the 200 call. So instead of paying $190 for it, I'm paying 185. Of course, I'm giving the upside away, but you know, I, that that's, you know, that's the same thing I do. And again, I, I'm kind of, I'm between that 30 and 40 uh, uh, strike on, uh, on my short call. And I keep that rule mechanical too. I sell, you know, I sell between the 30 and 40 strike. And I sell the, you know, the front, in this case, the front months may for me, and then if the if that 200 gets breached above here and I want to stay in the stock, if it gets breached, I get taken away, I make $15 on it. So I make, a, you know, $1,500 on 100 shares. But if I want to stay in the stock, then I just, you know, I would buy this back and I would roll it out to, if you're, you know, I'd roll it out to June. And I may roll it out to the same strike for a credit. There's not a lot of strikes here. So in some cases, I may be able to go up a dollar or two, get a little bit further away and still do it for a credit. but. Yeah, that's uh, you know, that's uh, it's it's. I don't know if I answered your question sufficiently, but uh, yeah, no, I mean yeah. it's 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 definitely helpful being able to have you sit down and break it down like that. Yeah, sure, that's what I'm here for. Yeah. I appreciate the questions. That so that I mean that's really how you know it's you know it. There's no grinding over. I don't think about you know what's going to happen if this happens because you know what's going to happen if that happens because I've got. I used to trade like that, try to trade directionally and all. Yeah, um, it's and, crazy. Yeah, it really does because, you know, one thing, to, you know, you start using all these indicators and, you know, one thing tells you to go up and one tells you to go down. And, I mean, it's just, 
Um, well, I've gotten to the point now where I take everything off, even for what I do with stocks and all I do is I just look at the price action uh -huh. and I just try and make a decision as to when I see stuff that's sold off heavily because I only want to buy, I don't sell. Right. And I just wait till everything is sold off heavily. And then I look and go, would a professional person be buying based on, do they think that they're done? You know, because all the people who are selling have to buy to cover to get their profit right. out of it. Sure. And is it going to start the reverse trend going back up? And so I don't even use any support i mean i just with my eye visually just look at it and make I don't, a call on the price action i don't either you know if uh you know baidu last week i don't have the stock in baidu but i'm i'm weighing the money on this five dollar white credit spread but i mean baidu got i don't know what day it was it got really trashed one of these days maybe i was up in here but when i when i did it but you know if i were going to buy baidu right now I, I would do the same thing i would go to the i would go to the front month uh, and I'd say, man, they, of course, a little late. It'd be great down here. We, they really trashed this thing, you know, below 200. But I would, you know, I'd simply say, okay, I'm going to buy 100 shares of stock. I'm going to sell between the 30 and the 40 delta. So I'd sell that one, 33 delta. You know, I got a, you know, I got a 67 percent probability it's going to stay below that. I'm going to keep the eight dollars in, um, pro, in premium, which lowers my cost, improves my cost basis by eight dollars and then the just buying the stock and, and move on but i'm a contrarian to that you know that way too and well if you go long you're just you're looking for uh you're just going long you're just buying the stock but another thing i would do too is if i you know it was down here and i might say i want to own the stock but i might sell rather than 30 delta i may get a little more aggressive you know let's apple would be a better one for me because i i know that stock better i said you know, Apple's only got a 14 IB rank, so it's not real attractive to sell premium. But if I really wanted to own Apple, it's about flat today. I might say, heck, I might sell this. I'll sell that for 475. If Apple goes up, I keep the 475 bucks. Yeah, if Apple goes down, down stock yeah, the price you want. yeah. And if yeah, it goes down, I'm you know, buying it for 120. You know, yeah. so 120 dollars, and that's the way I, uh, you know, probably more often than not, it's the way I enter stock positions. So, but. Um, but that's, um, you know, that's another conversation. But th that's uh, like you. I'm I'm pretty much a contrarian. I want to, you know, I I what I missed last week is or two weeks ago when I missed that when this thing really got trashed. I tried to sell the 165 the May 21st on top of my this 165 160 uh, put credit spread. Let's see if I can. And you know that thing was trading. I, I offered it for two dollars. I was too damn greedy. You know, now it's down to twenty one dollars. So I mean, that would have been a really nice. I would have taken it off before now, but I tried to get in, and I was greedy. At, I thought, man, they're really trashing this thing. Oh, you know, I should be able to get two bucks for it. Well, I should have. I should have kept lowering my my offer a little bit. Uh, you know, as long as I got as long as I got down to a third of the width of the strike, so, you know, around dollar seventy or seventy five. But when you get a real radical down move like that, the volatility spikes up, and that's what you can get, uh, you know, a little bit more for the for the uh, options because the price of the options go up. Yeah. So. All right. Well, I appreciate the time. Then, yeah, anytime. Let me know. I'm here. I'm, I get bored. I'm I'm looking for stuff to do. So, uh, anytime you got any questions, just let me know. So. Okay. If you got questions on the specific trades? Yeah, don't hesitate to ask. Yeah, mostly it's still, like you say, just trying to understand the overall concepts that are taking place. And then as I get more of that under my belt, then I'll start narrowing in on actually things I'm trying to do. Okay. Let me know how I can help. I'm here. All right. Have a good afternoon. Oh, you too. Thank you. Bye.